the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Jesus and Salome, women who had remained with Jesus to the end, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him properly to make things right. Very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb where they had seen his body laid. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? A predicament that needed a solution. Would someone be there to assist? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. Predicament solved, but by whom? As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Obviously, this is astonishing. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there's the place where he was laid. No body, an empty tomb, an empty space, more alarming. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Remember, this is the third day. So they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them. <clears throat> so much emotion. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Afraid. Afraid that it is true. Afraid that it isn't. But this is a beginning not an ending, and somehow a sprinkling of hope it becomes a torrent of belief, and fear is washed away. Suddenly, where there was death, there is life. The stone is rolled away, the floodgate is open, and God's living water surges in and saturates the earth with love. Christ is risen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Brothers and sisters, this is the good news. 
proclaim. Christ appears to us now. Our opening hymn is number 233, Christ the Lord is risen today. Resurrection Sunday. As we continue in our attitude of prayer, this is the time in our service where we have a moment to quiet ourselves, 
calm down from all of our Easter candy and the excitement, and turn our attention to the rest of our worship, beginning with the prayer of confession. Please continue to join me in an attitude of prayer. Gracious God, you have walked patiently with us through our Lenten journey. You have celebrated our successes and our growing understanding of your love, and you have mourned our failures and rejections of your healing mercies. This day, as we have gathered to celebrate the joy of Easter, let us remember that we are to become Easter people, people of the resurrection, people who know that what was thought to be impossible has been conquered. Forgive our stubbornness and fears, fill us with your healing love, and help us to become the disciples that you need to serve in this world. For we ask this in the name of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ. God is merciful. God is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Feel the healing, loving power of God in your lives, for it is given to you through Jesus Christ. Amen.
tree is strong and is perfect for me. And he swung his axe and chopped down the tree. Goodbye, friends. I am off to become a mighty sailing ship. I do not care what tree I get. This one will have to do. And he swung his axe and chopped down the tree. But wait! All I wanted to do was stay on this mountain and help people think of God. And so the trees went their individual ways, as all of us must. The first tree rejoiced when she arrived at a carpenter shop, but there were no treasure chests being made that day. Instead, the tree became a feed box for animals. The second tree, tree made it to the ocean, but there were no mighty sailing ships being made that day. Instead, Boat builders fashioned him into a simple fishing boat. As for the third tree, she was cut the lumber that fell a pile. Many long days and nights passed, and the trees nearly forgot their dreams. For remember, he said God works in mysterious ways. One night, a young couple arrived at the stable because there was nowhere else for them to stay. And there among the animals, a baby was born and placed in the feed box. And as all the animals and shepherds gathered around, the tree was filled with joy. I am holding treasure after all, the greatest treasure in the world, the gift of a leader who will guide people to a new way, a better way to live and live God. One afternoon, a group of fishermen set out to sea with a new member of their group, who promptly fell asleep. A horrible storm whipped up, and the tree thought that he would surely sink but the man rose from his sleep. Peace, he said, and the, the sea was all out. Look how the ocean obeys him, and the people follow him. I may be just a simple fishing vessel, but I can see that I carry something mightier than any sailing ship might hope to carry. I am carrying the king of heaven and earth. One day, the third tree was pulled roughly from her pile and hammered into her cross. A man was nailed to the cross and forced to carry her up a hill, not unlike the holy mountain. The tree shuddered to think what she had become. So the next day, the sun rose, and the earth trembled with joy. And the third tree knew that God had made everything right. My dream has come true after all. Every time the people think of me, they will think of God. And that was better than being the tallest tree in the world. So it is for all of us. God works in surprising and unexpected ways. The story of Easter is that our mistakes are forgiven, and we are given a new day, each and every day. But we should also remember, when dreams seem far away, that God has a plan for each one of us. And it is a good plan. We Rejoice and spread the good news. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. <laughs>
We made it. For the past 40, a little more than 40 days, we have been on our Lenten journey to the cross with Jesus. And now we have finally arrived. It is good to be here with all of you, to celebrate Christ's resurrection, and to once again reflect on the miracle, the mystery that is so central to our faith as followers of Christ. During the night, we revisited the stories of our ancestors, Noah, Abraham and Sarah, Moses, and these stories reminded us how much God loves us, no matter what, and of God's commitment to stick with us, even when we make God weep or try to push God away. Since the beginning, God has wanted us to live in peace and harmony with each other and with all of creation. But since the beginning, that has proven to be quite a challenge for us. We're told that in God's kingdom, the lion and the lamb lie down together, and neither will fear the other, because one isn't going to try to eat the other. They will coexist peacefully despite their differences. But in our reality and in our history, we have rarely been able to achieve that vision of unity, equality, and peace, at least not on a widespread and sustainable basis. And it's so very easy to get discouraged with our current reality. There are so many real and legitimate things that concern us about the state of our world and our global leadership about the state of our own government and our own society, within our own families, in our own community, and even within ourselves as we wrestle with our goals, our priorities, and the very real pressure of too much to do and what feels like so little time. Sometimes it can feel like it's all just a little bit too much. We might wonder, why bother to try to make a difference or even fix things? Maybe I should just accept things the way they are, the way they've always been. If it's been good enough for those before me, maybe it's what's supposed to be. Will my tiny little efforts even make an impact against so much systematic power, against so much well-funded opposition, against so much apathy, where we tweet our anger instead of rising up. Is it really worth it? Plus, on top of that, I have my own personal problems. I have to worry about things in my life. Do I even really have time to care for people who I may never meet or don't even know about? Where am I supposed to find that energy, that willingness to fight for justice? We might sometimes feel a little bit like the women when they went to Jesus' tomb that morning. Heart sick and worn out, helpless, and importantly afraid that no matter how crazy things seem right now, the worst could still be yet to come. And then Easter happens. The women see that the tomb is empty and Jesus lives. And because Jesus lives, Hope lives. Jesus' entire ministry was focused on making God's vision a reality, a world filled with peace and love, governed with justice, where all lives matter equally, regardless of socioeconomic status, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, nationality, profession, physical ability, age, you name it. God loves us all. All lives are precious in God's view, and we are all beloved children of God. God's vision was Jesus' passion, his reason for being, the reason he was beloved by those on the margin, those who were hurting. He brought them hope, and the reason he was executed by those in power. He threatened their way of life. So they tried to stop the movement, to kill Jesus' passion by literally killing Jesus in a very public and painful way so that there would be no doubt 
among his followers as to who was in charge, whose version of reality would triumph. But God was not ready to give up the fight. The empty tomb is validation that God is not willing to give up on us. We can do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with our God. We can create a just and peaceful world. We can love our neighbors, and with God's grace, we can learn to love ourselves. Jesus lives, and because Jesus lives, our struggle for wholeness, peace, and justice has been given a new life. We know that the struggle will not be easy, and it won't be fast, because as much as we wish it, God's time is not our time. But we can rejoice today because we know that today's reality is not all there is. This is not how things have to be or meant to be. The empty tomb is a powerful reminder of God's ability to make a way out of no way, to bring hope to situations that are hopeless, to surprise us with new possibilities when we're just about to give up. We have come to the end of our Lenten journey, but our journey as disciples of Christ continue, guided by Jesus' passion and sustained by God's love. Let us press on with renewed hope, unyielding trust in God, and unconditional compassion for each other to do the work that the world needs, to be the people that Christ calls us to be. And always remembering that in God, all things are possible. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Amen.
in a worship service when we share our joys and concerns and prayer. As it's a tradition on a communion Sunday, we have a form in the bulletin where you can write down your prayer request and then bring them forward uh, when we come for communion to give to the ushers. Uh, you don't have to be a member of Pilgrim to have a prayer request. Uh, we pray for everybody and enjoy, enjoy doing that. So if you have that, if you just know if you don't want your prayer request listed in the bulletin next week, though, please check the box. Also, during our time of communion, we will have four deacons stationed around the sanctuary for healing prayer if you would like to go to them for individual prayer. At this time, let us join together in the pastoral prayer as printed in your bulletin. God of all creation, we recall that in the beginning you spoke life into emptiness. Today we are reminded that you are a God of extravagant generosity. An empty tomb is not the end of the story of our faith. We are not left with bereavement and fear. Abundant life is our inheritance. When we encounter people bereft of hope, may we bring the when we see situations empty of compassion, maybe us love. When we see lives devoid of joy, maybe the prayers of the light. When we see relationships empty of peace, maybe demonstrate the ways of reconciliation. When we meet those who fill their emptiness with life-destroying behaviors, maybe God. When we know that people are hungry and thirsty, may we find ways of providing nourishment. When we encounter people fearful of the future, may we hold before them the promise of peace. Now, please join me as we lift our voices together on this day of resurrection, speaking slowly, listening to each other, and making room for the range of ways we say the prayer we have been taught. Now, as one might say, we come to the heart of the matter. This is an open table. When Jesus sat down, he sat with anyone. He ate at table, particularly with those who felt that no one else wanted to eat with them. This table is an open table just as Jesus' table was. Everyone is welcome. You don't have to have been here before. You don't have to have been to any church before. You don't have to have been baptized. You don't have to know that you wanted communion when you woke up this morning. Everybody is welcome. The way that we do communion here at Pilgrim is by intention. What we'll do is there will be two stations up here at the front, um, and we will uh, offer you, the deacons and I will offer you bread. Uh, on the outside is traditional bread, in the middle is gluten-free option, as well as grape juice for the wine. We'll ask that you come up through the two uh, center aisles, take communion, and then return through the uh, outer aisles. And again, there will be deacons available for healing prayer. If you brought food for the food pantry, you can bring that up when you come, uh, as well as you can bring your offering, because the ushers will be here. And one last thing, uh, this is a bit of a special Sunday, so the choir is staying in the loft. Thank you for moving the tripping hazard. Uh, and so the the choir will be staying in the loft, and so we're going to ask that um, they come down and be served first so that they can go back. And then as soon as you see the choir, let them, let them feel free to come forward. I 
think we're ready to begin. God is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give our thanks and praise of God. Will the ushers, the deacons who are serving, and the ones doing healing prayer please come forward? Dear God, you created the world by speaking life into being. You placed within us and within each plant and animal of your creation amazing abilities to form and nurture new life, so that your creation might be renewed, reborn, season by season, child by child. You covenanted with your people and gave them law that showed the way of life, a path of peace, justice, mercy, reverence, love. You provided wise men and women as judges for your people to show them the path of life. You call forth prophets who dared to speak the truth of life to worldly powers that promoted death. You sent Jesus, your son, to walk in the way of life that we might follow. He suffered and died because of his refusal to participate in the death-dealing violence of the world, he rose again in victory because the powers of death cannot overcome the divine power of life. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of life, and holy is Jesus Christ, your Son, the resurrected one. You sent your only begotten Son, in whom your fullness dwells, to be for us the way, the truth, the life. Revealing your love, radiating your life, Jesus taught those who listened to him, healed those who believed in him, received all who sought him. He enacted peace amid violence, love in the face of hate. He offered divine life to all people suffering under worldly forces of death. We thank you, God, for the incredible gift of Jesus, the Word made flesh. Through this resurrection life, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery of to sin and death, and made us new people. It is as the renewed, redeemed, and enlivened people of God that we gather this morning. And then remember that on the night before he died, Jesus took bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Longing to experience and share the fullness of life that you offer, we take these gifts that you have given us, this bread and this cup, and celebrate with joy the eternal life offered to us through Jesus Christ. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of your bread and cup. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who seek to follow in his life-giving way. 
that we may further your reign of peace and justice in every place. In the eating of this bread as Christ's body and in the sharing of this cup as Christ's blood, we invite your life to fill us. We invite your spirit to lead us ever more faithfully to be the body of Christ in the world. All glory and honor are yours, eternal God, now and forever. Amen. Your promise of life. 